Trinity Episcopal Church in Baytown, Texas. Our worship bulletin this morning can be found under our worship on our website, trinitychurchbaytown.net. can be also found in the link in your e-news, which is pinned to the top of our church's Facebook page. Welcome and please join me as we sing the hymn, We Know That Christ Is Raised. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty 
that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 116. I love you, O God, because you have heard the voice of my supplication. Because you have inclined your ear to me whenever I called upon you. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came, I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon your holy name. O God, o God I, I pray you, you save, save my, my life. life. How shall I repay God? For all, all the good, good things he has done, done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And, and call upon the name of God. God. I will fulfill my vows to God. In the presence of all people. Precious in your sight, O God. In the death of your servants. O God, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the, offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call upon your holy name. I will fulfill my vows to you. In the presence of all your people. In the courts of God's house. In the midst of you, O oh, Jerusalem. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson this morning is from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without effect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. 
And he said to them, What were you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still, and they looked sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there these days? And he asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and they told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who had said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself that were in the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us. Because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. And so we went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? The same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. perhaps because they knew their Messiah, their prophet, was gone or dead or something they just couldn't name. Perhaps they were walking away from what's was, trying to imagine, all right, that part of our life is over. What's next? What will be our new normal? We can feel their hopelessness as they begin to tell the man that they did not yet recognize as Jesus what they were speaking about. In the story that they were telling themselves and this traveler, they said, we had hoped that he was the one. We had hoped. It is a grief-filled, sad beginning of a sentence. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We know this line all too well. We had hoped our trip wouldn't be canceled. We had hoped we'd get to go to prom. We had hoped our job would be secure. We had hoped the medicine would work. We had hoped we could make a marriage work. We had hoped to retire this year. 
We had hoped no one knew we knew would be infected. We had hoped, we had hoped, we had hoped. Fill in the blank. We've been there. What is what you would say we had hoped? Sometimes we find ourselves on the road to Emmaus. We find ourselves alone and in pain and dejected and our dreams and our hopes have been torn apart and so we're just going home. We find ourselves a little bit like Cleopas and his unnamed companion on the road to Emmaus saying, we had hoped. And it is in those moments that sometimes it is difficult to recognize Jesus. It's difficult to know that Jesus is walking along with us in our journey. Our hearts may be strangely warmed, but our heads are not computing. That Jesus is right there beside us, present with us, all the way as we walk to whatever is our Emmaus. In the disciples' world, they thought Jesus was dead. I mean, the woman, women had told them a, a far-fetched tale about Jesus not being in the tomb, but, but they clearly didn't believe them. I mean, how could they possibly? So they weren't even looking for him. And so they certainly didn't recognize him. How often do we not recognize Jesus? How often we do we say, Jesus, I need you. I do not really expect he will show up or struggle to recognize the ways he does show up, the ways he is walking alongside us to Emmaus. Sometimes, just like for the disciples, real obstacles get in the way, and we become mired in what we had hoped for in our despair. It happens. And it is in this way that our gospel for today reminds me of a scene from a movie that I have seen this week. Now, some of you may not have seen it, but you know the scene in your own heart. Others of you have had your children or your grandchildren singing the songs over and over and over again, and you're like, great, they're about to break into song because it's become their COVID soundtrack. I'm talking about the scene from Frozen 2, where Anna is in the cave singing out. She sings this. I have seen dark before, but not like this. This is cold. This is empty. This is numb. The life I knew is over. The lights are out. Hello, darkness. I'm ready to succumb. This grief has a gravity that pulls me down. You know the scene. If not from the movie, then from life. The question for us is then how do we, in those cave-like we had hoped for moments, recognize the presence of God? In my experience, it it takes some grounding reminders. For Anna, in this case, it was the tiny voice that whispers in your mind. For the disciples, it was sharing of the story and the breaking of bread. My prayer, my hope, is that you too will recognize the, and experience the presence of God. Maybe it is that still small voice whispering in the cave like it was for Anna and more biblically Elijah. <laughs> the risen Lord, revealed to you in the scriptures and one day once again in the breaking of bread. The walking with us in grief of Emmaus. The things we had hoped for. And so we just keep walking and taking one more step. Or as Anna sings, when hope is gone, we do the next right thing. One more trudge through the valley of the shadow of death. One more climb out of the cave. One more motion as we rise up from where we had fallen at the tomb. One more trip back to Jerusalem. Because it is Easter. The Lord 
is risen indeed. Even when it doesn't feel like Easter. Even when it feels like that first Easter. When we find ourselves at a tomb, when we find ourselves in a locked room, when we find ourselves walking to a maze. Beloved, the reminder for today is that on our road to a maze, this road of despair and pain and crushed hope, it is still Easter. And for some of us, it's an Easter story we can very much relate to. Emmaus is one more story about how it is, as the presiding bishop says, it is Easter anyway. All of us are on an Emmaus road at the moment, aren't we? We're trying to find a new normal. We, we're at home watching or streaming that church service. We're not with friends or family. And we're searching for God in this new normal while we're searching and asking God to be with us, praying, God, that we might feel God's presence with us every step of the way. And my prayer is that we recognize that God is with us every step of the way. I invite you in the comments to share an example of where you encountered and recognize Christ in your midst in this last week. Where did you meet Jesus on the road to Emmaus? Open our eyes, Lord, to your presence in our lives and the lives of others. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Fill us with the joy of your holy and life-giving resurrection. Risen Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Risen Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Risen Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Risen Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Reveal the light of your presence to all those who are in danger, sorrow, sickness, or any other adversity. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them to the joy of your salvation. We remember especially those that we now name silently aloud or in the comments. they may be comforted and strengthened in the love of Christ our risen Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially those we now name Florence Cummings, John Ross Carter, Flora Alsabrook, Karen, PJ, Diane Chambers, Lance, and those we now name silently, aloud, or in the comments. That your will for them may be fulfilled. We may pray that we share with all your saints in your resurrection. Risen Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this hour we turn to you, O Lord, for the full knowledge of our frailty, our vulnerability, and our great need as your mortal creatures. We cry to you as one human family, unsure of the path ahead, unequal to the unseen forces around us, frightened by the sickness and death that seem all too real to us now. Stir up your strength and visit us, O Lord. Be our shield and rock and hiding place. Guide our leaders, our scientists, our nurses and doctors. Give them wisdom and fill their hearts with courage and determination. Make even this hour, O Lord, a season of blessing for us that in fear we might find you mighty to save, and in illness or death we find the cross to be none other than the way of life. All this we ask in the name of the one who bore all our infirmities, even Jesus Christ, our risen and victorious Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. And we celebrate this day, the birthdays of Susie Powers, Bill Rogers, Mims Minsterman. The anniversaries uh, of Tim and myself, and Ted and Susan Hazelwood. And the many birthdays, bless the anniversaries and blessings that we now name aloud in our hearts or in the comments. Watch over these children, O oh Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Send the fire of your Holy Spirit upon your people, enabling us to share that most daring faith that is in us. Risen Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you. My own peace I leave not with you. I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. Give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. The peace. 
peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And by you to greet one another in the peace of Christ. I do have for you today a few small announcements. Um, the first is I want to give a big thank you out to the many um, helping hands in our prayer blanket ministry and the others in our church who have been making masks for all in our church and our community. We wear these masks because we love our neighbors. Anytime that we are out in public, it is a way that we share and lay down our life for another. I want to encourage you to have one and to wear one. If you do not have one, we can get one to you. Um, we will be out here again next Saturday morning from 10 to 10.30, distributing to the wider community. Um, and we can also get them to you in other ways. So I just want you to know that I hope that you join us in that practice anytime that you are out in public. Also, the other announcement is that this is the last Sunday um, that Robert will be with us before his sabbatical. So please join me in wishing Robert well on his sabbatical. <laughs> send him a note, send him an email, send it before May 1st. Sabbath is so important. Um, our deacon Mickey Rios has also taken some Sabbath and some rest today. And so we encourage you to take Sabbath and rest whenever you can. So, beloved, walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself as an offering and sacrifice for the world. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Please join us in our closing hymn.
strength in the name of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Why don't you play it with the post loop? Why don't you start a new one for the post loop? Oh my gosh. Okay, start a new one for the post loop. I don't know what I did. One second, gentlemen. <coughs> Post loop for you all. 